Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I came to warn you of a pandemic. There is a pandemic around this world, and it is extremely dangerous, but we're going to deal with that later. Right now, I want to share a few of the pandemics we've dealt with in the past. In the 1300s, it is believed that 75 million to 200 million deaths occurred as a result of the Black Death. It was a plague that spread horribly. In the early 1900s, the Spanish flu claimed thousands of lives. I think it was more than 200,000. Think about this. Think about this. All right. Now, you notice how some of the laws nowadays are set to be a little bit more sterile, a little bit more sanitary. There's a reason for that. There are certain things you're not to touch, certain things you're not to dabble in, certain things you're not to contaminate yourself with. Now, when they dealt with and I think it was in 2011, 60 million people were infected by HIV AIDS and 25 million died. Think about that now. Think. Now, a lot of us don't like being told what to do. I'm making a point, so you've got to stay with me on this. Doctors will tell you, you must be vaccinated. All kinds of programs will teach you how to live a more sanitary life, how to wash your hands constantly all day, how to avoid spreading germs. They come up with all these preventative measures. So in essence, you find yourself having to separate yourself even at times from people you love because they're infected and they don't want you to become infected. It really gets crazy, the extremes we have to go through to avoid contact, to avoid being contaminated, to avoid death. All right, untimely death. Now, we understand that, don't we? We get how pandemics can, cre can wreak havoc in families' lives by all the deaths, sometimes as, as high as five. One in five people. You have five people. One in five people. That's 20%. Whoa, that's deep. One fifth of the population could die just like that. That's dangerous. I remember one time my, uh, my stepson and I, we watched a movie in Pasadena called Outbreak. Oh my goodness, that movie was crazy. They showed how the germs, I'm making a point, please don't go anywhere. How they showed these germs flying out of people's mouths when they sneezed or they coughed or they exhaled or yawned, whatever. And as the germs are traveling throughout the air, as the air conditioning was blowing all the contaminants all throughout the, 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 the area of the movie theater, people would open their mouths and laugh or open their mouths to drink and the germ would fly in their mouth. And within minutes, they're coughing and sneezing. And the coughing and sneezing just, just took off like, it was almost like watching popcorn pop. Boop, 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 boop. All over the place. I mean, people were crawling out of there, coughing. They were fainting. They were falling out. Before the movie was over, people were already getting deathly sick. Now, what they showed was how people transferred some of the germs by touch. Listen to what I'm saying. Stick with me on this. They were touching things. Because I want to share a pandemic with you. And it's a warning. And you, you really need to take heed. And here we are, we're in the movie theater, and we're watching these people in a movie theater in the movie. And they're touching things that other people touched. And the sickness is spreading literally like a wild brush fire. Oh, it was crazy. Now, 
check it out. When the movie was over and he and I left the movie theater, we walked up to the signal light so that we could cross the street and get to where the parking lot was, where our car was. When I'm waiting for him to push the button for the light, do you know what he did? He reached up, went to press the button, and he pulled his hand back. That movie stuck with him. He did not want to become acquainted with anyone else's germs, now did he? And I had the biggest laugh out of it because I realized that all of a sudden now he was made seriously conscious of how germs spread, how easily death can take over one's life. Now, I went on and pressed the button and we got across the street, no problem. But what I want to share with you is what kind of things will make you more careful? What kind of information that you watch in a movie theater, that you read in an article, that you read in a book, that you inform yourself with at a school, in a class, whatever, that will open your mind to, I better be careful. I can't just touch anything. I can't just play with anything. I can't just hang out with anybody. Who knows what they have on them? Check it out. Check it out now. All right. Now, this is what I want you to hear about. We are in the last days, and there is a serious pandemic going around. And we have stuck our heads in the ground to ignore it, hoping it will just go away on its own. No, it won't. This monster will grow and grow and grow, just like germs in a Petri dish sitting in the dark. It grows. It thrives. And this pandemic is thriving and people are dropping like flies and we're not paying attention to it. Not at all. We're ignoring it. We're in denial. We don't want to deal with it. We don't want to face it. Why? Because we don't want a doctor telling us we need a vaccine. We don't want to have to take all kinds of medication. We don't want to have to consider the fact that one dumb move and our life can be over. We don't want to think about it. So we shine it on. We play it off. We ignore the obvious and we swallow the lies. The pandemic I'm talking about in this world is, let me spell it for you. S I N S I N sin. Now, you listen to the health experts tell you to stay in the house. You will listen to them say, don't touch this, or don't go near these types of areas, or or, or don't get involved with that. And you will control your behavior you will you will refrain from many things in order for your in order to protect yourself and protect your loved ones right why is it when god says in his word touch not the unclean thing why is it when god says don't dabble in the occult don't get involved in sinful ways. Don't buy into their program because if you do, it will steer you away. Why is it when the Bible says the wages of sin is death? You don't want to hear that. Interesting, huh? You don't want to hear that. God tells the people in Israel, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, don't touch their idols. Don't get involved in their sins. Don't, equi don't acquaint yourself with these people. You must drive them out and destroy them. Why? That sounds cold, doesn't it? He says, if you allow yourself to intermingle, if you allow yourself to be, to handle and touch 
the unclean thing, you will become contaminated. Your thinking will become contaminated. Your life will become contaminated. Your standards will become contaminated. And you will go for the okie doke, so to speak. So whatever lies and whatever propaganda they're spreading, you'll buy into it, won't you? Hmm, interesting. Isn't that what's going on today? Isn't that what's happening right now? We are buying into a lie, many lies. Male is female, female is male. Hey, go for the gusto. It's your thing, do what you want to do. But then we, we, don't, we don't stop there now. We don't stop there. We call wrong right and right wrong, don't we? Wait, we don't stop there. Oh, no, 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 we don't stop there. We have stopped prayer in schools. We have uh, put a check on Bibles and, and put a check on, on scriptures being written in public. We have slowly eased God out of the picture. So all of the sterilization, all of the, all of the standards in society that kept us from falling into a contaminated, sick life. We are removing the sterilization procedures. We're removing the cleansing acts. We're removing the laws of holiness, cleanliness, purity. We're removing them and making more room and more allowances for contamination. Think about that. We stopped prayer in schools. We don't like open Bible study. We don't like discussing God and Jesus. Oh, you don't, you're not going to hear that name on TV in a movie. Why? Because it might offend. Offend who? We're talking true purity. We're talking the cleanest possible entity you can come up with. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But we don't want clean. We don't want light. We want darkness. We want contaminants. We want sickness. We want death through sin. Hey, I do my thing. You do your thing. Hey, y'all. It's a pate. Let's pate hate. Let's eat, drink, and be merry. Hey, let's get it on. Why? Because we don't take the pandemic seriously. And it's killing, 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 killing. And we are watching some of you are watching your children die. And you excuse it. You rationalize it. You ignore it. You go into denial. Because you don't want to go through the problem, the trouble, the work of confronting it. So you let it be. 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 Oh, come on. You must address the contamination. You must address a disease. You must battle that bad boy. You have to quarantine the area. You must burn the contaminants, burn the sheets, burn the clothes. You must do things to get rid, if you ever want to get rid of the contaminants, if you ever want to get rid of the disease, the pandemic, you must burn things. You must destroy. Oh, think about it. But we don't want to do that. We want to cohabit with sin. We want to cohabit with a sick lifestyle. Why? Because we don't want to, don't rock the boat, baby. Don't tip the boat over. Don't rock the boat, baby. Oh, think about it. Think. <coughs> <coughs> Why? 
Where are we headed? Where do you think this world is headed? Society. Hmm? Think about it. No mother, no father. Don't call him a man. Don't call him a woman. Ooh. God made man and woman, but we want to make chaos. We'd rather have it that way. Because that way we get along with everybody. Yeah, and everybody likes us. And it, it really is a lot easier that way because we don't want to rock the boat and offend people. Do you know how offensive it is for a person who is dying of, of a debilitating disease that they caught from someone else? Huh? That's debilitating. That's offensive. But you'd rather let them do what they want, spread the HIV, spread the syphilis, do your thing. Don't worry about it. Screw up these little kids' lives by a bunch of pedophi pedophiles just screwing them up and down, back and forward, in and out. Screw with their heads. Mess with them. Yeah, you have a society of sick folks. And you think, oh, they're going to work. They're functioning. They're doing great. They're dying. And that's the way society wants it. There's either big money in it, folks can get rich, or folks don't want to be told what to do. But if you got a debilitating, a debilitating sickness, you'd be up in that hospital hating every minute of it, but you'd be doing what the doctor told you to do. He tells you not to move. He tells you you got to stay in that room. You don't budge. You stay in that room. God tells you, thou shalt not <laughs> talk to the hand. I ain't got time for you, God. Mm, forget that. I'm grown. Tell me what I can't do. And what's your attitude? Well, if I go to hell, then hell, I just go to hell. At least I lived it up. Oh, baby, you have no idea what you're saying. See, I don't know how to warn because I'm not used to people who don't listen. I'm used to reasonable people. My father was a man of reason and wisdom. My husband was a man of reason and wisdom. I can't, I don't have the patience. I'm not God. I don't have the patience trying to beat truth into a head that won't have it. I'm like, I'm like what the Bible says, wipe the dust off your feet as a testimony against them and keep on trucking, baby. I ain't got time. So you can live the life of a pandemic victim waiting for the ax to fall. A any day, any day. You can live that way all you want. You go right on ahead. But I tell you what, if somebody told you tomorrow that they have to keep you under quarantine so that you don't spread the disease to either your children, your husband, your wife, your mama, your papa, your best friend, whoever, and you know you're going to die, and you know if they get involved with you, they'll die too. You keep them away from you as much as you want their company, as lonely as you are. Why? Because you understand the deadliness. Why don't you understand deadliness and sin? Why don't you understand what the accursed thing really means? Why don't you get that? Why would you rather have darkness than light? Why? Why would you rather be sick? When God can remove your emotional scars, your mental scars, your spiritual scars, you don't have to live a life of a cripple for the rest of your life. You don't have to prove to everybody you're all that in a bag of chips because when you get in Christ, God shows you who you are and you know who you are. And you don't have to prove anything to anybody because God has made you whole. But no, you'd rather live a life of an emotional cripple. You'd rather live a life of a narcissistic sociopath. Why? You'd rather live uh, selfish. Why? 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 I, I don't get it. 
The question is, do you know why? Or is it just because you don't want anybody telling you what to do? Even if it could save your life, your soul, your family. <sighs> See, the three things we have to battle as human beings start from the beginning of time. Genesis. The lust of the eyes. the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Hey, now. Those are the three foundational things we have to deal with, don't we? That's pitiful. That's pitiful. Every sin in, uh, uh, under heaven is based on those three common denominators. My question to you is what steps are you willing to take to get cleansed, purified, healed, made whole, and be totally restored to a life that's worth living? Too big a price to pay, huh? You too grown. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. All right. Have at it. That's between you and your maker. You have at it. All I can say is I tried to warn you. I tried to tell you how deadly the pandemic is. Hmm? God said you shall surely die. And what does Satan do? The little serpent talks to Eve and says, Did God say you would surely die? Well, you wouldn't surely die. You would be like God. And, and the fruit is wonderful. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Wouldn't you like to have some of that tree? Oh, yes. He's cheating you. You you do want to try it, don't you? Don't you want to be like him, like God's knowing good and evil? Yeah. Yeah. So there's the lust of the eyes. Ooh, boy, that fruit sure does look fruit scrumptious. Lust of the flesh. Oh, I want it so bad. I'm craving for it. And the pride of life. I can be as a god. Yes. How long? How long will it take before you realize that you are giving in to spreading even further the pandemic? of sin, which will not only destroy you, but people you love and people after you. Is that what you want? Is that your legacy? Okay. Have a nice day. Shall I say have a nice life? Because when it's over, baby, I sure hope you made the right choice in time.